In 3, 1345, the situation changed. There was a terrible plague that broke out in Europe, and actually it began in Kiev, in Ukraine. And this plague spread westward into Europe and killed off millions of people in Europe. The Black Death drove people out of the cities and, and left the, the land decimated. In fact, they estimate that at least 30% of the Roman Empire died from this plague. It, it had an even worse effect on the local parishes. The priests would go and they would go into a sick person's room and they would administer last rites because the person was dying. And they would be exposed time and time again to the Black Plague. And many of the priests in the local parishes died because of the practice of, of administering last rites in the, uh, to the dying person. So this left many congregations at the local level with no priest. And because there was no priest, people were left to live like they wanted, however, however they pleased, because there was nobody to contradict them. And that, that began the Renaissance, so-called. And the Renaissance was, was actually a period of license where they, people were, were going back into wickedness that had been characteristic before the church entered the world. And then in, in the uh, 1400s, um, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, a, a German priest, came to Rome, and he was appalled at the kinds of evil that he saw in the church in Rome. And so he, he nailed to the bulletin board of the castle at Florence, he nailed his 99 theses of things that he saw in the, the practice of the church that are, were not in accordance with the Bible. And he tried to reform the Catholic Church, and the, the Pope became very angry with him because of, of what he said about the church in Rome. And Martin Luther had to flee. He, he, he fled to uh, a friend in the country, in their castle, and they protected him. And the church didn't find him. But that, Martin Luther was uh, excommunicated. He was cast out of the church because of what he did, trying to reform the, the church and bring it back from the evil that it was practicing. And that began the Protestant Reformation in Europe. And this Protestant Reformation was greatly aided by the invention of the printing press. About that time, Gutenberg invented the printing press so that, that uh, Luther's theses were, were printed and distributed all over Europe. And people could read what, what uh, Luther was objecting to with the Catholic Church. And many, many people followed Luther. And there would begin this period of uh, the Inquisition that followed that. And there were many protesters against the excesses of the Catholic Church who um, were excommunicated from the church. And they began the Protestant Reformation. They, they said, we need to get back to the Bible. We need to get back and teach and practice what the Bible says. At this time, there was a, a difficult situation for people in that um, the Bible was written in Latin. In 450 AD, Jerome translated the, uh, the Bible from Greek into Latin, and it became the uh, language, the Bible of the church for the next thousand years. There were some men uh, that translated the Bible from Latin into their native tongues, and the, the church had them killed because they had the, the courage to translate the, uh, the Bible into the native language. This Bible is Tagalog. In Luther's time, people died translating the Bible into the language of the people. And most people, do you speak Latin? Or can you read Latin? Neither could most of the people in Martin Luther's day, they couldn't read Latin. Only the priests. They would, the priests would go to school and they would learn Latin fluently and they could read the Bible. But the people couldn't read the Bible. They spoke German. They spoke French. They spoke English. They didn't speak. They didn't read Latin. And then the only copies of the Bible were a big Latin Bible that was chained to the podium. 
So if you wanted to read the Bible, you had to go to the church building and look at the Latin. And if you couldn't read it, well, sorry about your luck. You don't have a Bible that you can take with you to church. You don't have a Bible that you can read and at your leisure in your own language. You can study the Word of God. We're greatly blessed, blessed, brethren, by the fact that we have the Bible in our own language. Do we take advantage of that? God has given us great blessing that we can read God's Word in our own language and understand it and, and use it to improve our lives, to use it to please God and, and to seek His favor. Do we take advantage of what God has given us? This is a great blessing. And this is, is for the important things in life. The, the school and the family and, and those... God has given us these things to enjoy, but they should not be first. They should not be first in our life. God should be first. These things are going to pass away. We're going to have to face God with what we've done with our life. We're going to have to face God whether we served Him or if we were covetous, if we were 